Hi everyone, my name is Alberto Vilts. I'm part of the innovation team of Aracari here in Lima, Peru. And today we have a very, very special conversation because we are not only going to talk about why Maido has become the best restaurant in Latin America, but also what are they doing right now during the COVID-19 times? And most important, how are they reinventing themselves, preparing themselves for the future? Okay, so it's going to be very interesting. Our guest today is, as you know, a chef Mitsuharu Tsumura, also known as Micha. He is, of course, one of the best uh, chefs in Latin America. His restaurant, My Do, has been among the top 50 best restaurants in the world for several years. And of course, being in that position, has been number one restaurant in Latin America for several years also. Now, I cannot call him Micha because I'm not really close friend of him, but I know someone who is a really, really close friend of him. And this is a dear person from our Aracari family, Mrs. Maria Julia Raffo. Maria Julia's little black book of connection with celebrity chefs, museum curators, artists, and more means she can facilitate exclusive access to our guests. And thanks of her, we're gonna have a very nice chat today. So with you, Maria Julia. Thank you, thank you, Alberto. Hello, everybody. We are here now with Micha. And uh, basically, it's not, it's not only the connections, but it's my passion for, for food and for, for our gastronomy that, uh, that makes me connect with these very talented uh, chefs. Uh, Micha, great to have you here. And first of all, for the people who don't know you, who only know Maido as the number one restaurant, but I know you from way before, from when you started. Tell us a little, about, a little bit about how your passion started for, for food and for cooking. Thank you, Maria Julia. Uh, and please, everybody can call me Micha. Everybody calls me Micha, no, no problem at all. Um, before starting, uh, I would like to really apologize uh, for not being able to, to connect at uh, 12 p.m. Uh, in Lima time, as we had it in schedule. And uh, this really doesn't happen, hasn't happened to me before, but we are in, uh, COVID-19 uh, times and everybody, everything is, is a little bit crazy right now. And we had a last minute inspection uh, in the restaurant. So uh, this took me a while to, to, to be able to get over it. And as soon as I, 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 I was able to, 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 to talk and finish, uh, I got into my computer and I'm here. Once again, I apologize to everybody that was, uh, that was in, the, in, the, in the meeting and uh, well, now we're going to be able to talk about everything. And uh, as Maria Julia asked me about Maido and, uh, and how and we started. Your passion, no? Your passion of yourself before, way before Maido, no? Oh, way before Maido. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, see, if we have to go back in time. Um, right now, I'm 38 years old. This 2020, I'm gonna become. Uh, I started uh, thing when I was around 10 years old, basically, and uh, this was because there were two TV programs uh, in Peru at that time. One of them was Teresa Ocampo. Teresa Ocampo, uh, she's uh, I would say the pioneer of. Uh, TV chefs uh, in Peru and maybe in the world. Uh, she came on TV almost every day. I, I believe it was every day. And uh, it, was, it was after I was in school. And uh, she made many typical dishes and also desserts. And uh, I started to make desserts at home first. Even though I don't, I, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not a pastry chef, uh, I decided to go to this for, for the savory food. But uh, for me, one of the, 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 the magic experiences that I, that I still remember, which is something very simple now, but for me as a kid was magic, was when I saw her making a meringue. Yeah. All of a sudden you have uh, egg whites, you start to beat them and they become like snow, right? And I said, how, how is it possible for egg whites to be egg whites and all of a sudden become to grow and grow and grow, you know, because of the air that's coming in and become meringue. So I started making meringues. 
I think too much because I wasn't able to eat all the meringue I was making and my mother got mad at me. You know, you, you, cannot, still, you cannot just make meringue for the sake of making it. You have to make something that you're going to eat afterwards. And, uh, and from there I started making cookies, uh, uh, some desserts. Of course, I remember my first cookies were, were really awful. Uh, I, I, they were not edible, I think. <laughs> and, uh, but everybody told in my house that they were good. I, I, when, I, when I tasted them, uh, I, I realized it wasn't true. But, and and um, how did it, how did, when did it become a, a real thing? Cooking okay. become something that was real for you as a career? Yes. Um, but before getting to that, there was one more TV program that I love. And uh, it's, it is special and it's a nice coincidence because this program uh, is from Carlos Arguiñano. Carlos Arguiñano... Okay a very well-known chef. Uh, I admire him um, until now, of course. Many people do. Uh, Teresa Campo and Carlos Reignano came to Maido last year, not, uh, 2019. And I was really happy because my two, uh, I would say, uh, I don't know, inspiration, the, the chef that inspired me since I was a kid, and they were sitting in my restaurant. And I, that was a, re a real honor for me. And in the case of Carlos Arignano, uh, what I love from him, and that's one of the things that made me really get into cooking, was that the way he cooks until now, it's a, mm -hmm. it's, it's a happy way of cooking. I would say he... Well, he it's a happy way of cooking. Cooks, he, he, sings, he sings, he dances, uh, he, he makes jokes, and all of a sudden you end up, you know, since watching somebody cook, but with happiness. And I said... Cooking is fun. So from there, I said, okay, you know what? Cooking is fun. So I started to cook. And uh, there was this lady that came to my house called Maura. She, I, I still have contact with her. She came to cook once a week to my house. And uh, since Peruvian food is, uh, most of the food is uh, based in uh, stews, uh, she cooked like four or five, or depending on, the, on, on, on how we, the, the, the week went uh, and my mother was able to cook or not because she was busy working with my father. Uh, she made the stews and she, she, we just put them in the freezer mm -hmm. and uh, she made Peruvian Creole food. So, so that's, every, that's, that's your, your, your soul, your soul food uh, was the Peruvian food as, as a kid. And then comes your... Yes, yes, but... The fusion, no? Right, right. Uh, but she made Peruvian food, but... Uh, adding some Japanese ingredients also because she learned from my grandmother Maura. So, so she, she, she right now should be like about 80 years old. Uh, she used to be uh, uh, um, the nanny of my mom when, okay. when, when, when she was a of course kid, you know, a baby. Uh, she helped my grandmother, which I couldn't meet because she passed away before I was born. She, everybody tells me that she was a great cook. And she learned from my grandmother. And all of a sudden, she was in my house, cooking in my house for, uh, for us, with the knowledge that my grandmother taught her. Even though I didn't get to meet my grandmother, I, I think that there was a connection with my grandmother, with, with Maura. Okay. That, that's that's I think what that we call soul, the soul. Food. Yes, 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 yes. And because everybody told me, you're, you're, I don't know, how, why do you cook so well? Because in your family, oh, by your grandmother. Your grandmother was a great cook, and 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 that from there we started, you know. And until I was 15, 16 years old, I really didn't take it so seriously, uh, meaning that I wasn't thinking that maybe being a chef or being a cook was going to be my profession. Uh, I just liked it. I just liked to cook, and that's it. Um, we have to understand that at, at those times, uh, the way people thought uh, the kids. The kids thought that maybe cooking was not a profession or mm -hmm. was not in top of mind, right? And my father, incredibly, uh, I, I hear a lot of stories that the parents, when, 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 when their children or when the kids uh, uh, or sons and daughters uh, decide to become cooks, sometimes they don't agree with that or, okay. or, or did not agree with that. And but he, was case, totally, he was totally supportive of you. Yes, of your career. You are no. of my career, and he told me the only thing I'm gonna tell you, and it's important for me, is that if you go uh, and uh, well, and you decide to be a chef or a cook, uh, please 
I need you to have a university bachelor's degree. Okay. Right. So you went to I study in the, in, the, in the States before? Uh, I went to uh, study in the States. I went to, to Johnson and Wales uh, College in Providence, Rhode Island for four mm -hmm. years. Uh, I did uh, two years in culinary arts, my associates and my bachelor's in food service uh, management. And uh, then I went to Japan. Then I went to Japan. To embrace your heritage. No? Yes. Um, but there was, a, I'm going to be honest, okay? There was a moment when I finished and I graduated from, from, from school, from college, and I came back to Peru thinking that I was able to open a restaurant, actually. I was already thinking when, when, I, when I was 21 years old that uh, I said, uh, Dad, I think uh, maybe I can have, and, and, and everybody, we talked about with, my, with, uh, with, with other chefs in Peru, uh, they know the story, uh, Gaston, Virgilio, mm -hmm. uh, Pedro, uh, Pedro Miguel, and uh, they, they always tell me, you know, you wanted to, to, to do many years ago a steak and sushi restaurant. That was one of my concepts at that moment. Because those, they, they are, those are two things I love, making steaks and making sushi. And um, all of a sudden, my, my dad said, are you sure you're going to make sushi? But you haven't been to Japan. And I said, but yes, I, have, I, I had some classes in the university and uh, I think I can make it. He, and I'm, Japan, I'm, I'm, I'm Japanese, I'm, you know, I'm Nisei. Yes, <laughs> I, I, I'm immature, really, you know, at that moment. That, 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 that's the truth. Uh, I, I was immature and, uh, and, and when, I, when, I, when I talk to, when I have the opportunity to go to a cooking school or, or, or give a conference and I have students, in front, I tell them the story because I think that sometimes, yes, there are stages in life. And at that moment, I felt confident about opening a restaurant and with my skills. And my, my dad said, please go to Japan. You should go to Japan and learn. And it was hard. It was hard. And, and yes, and then everything changed. Uh, my grandparents, uh, they are not with us anymore. They, they passed away. Uh, but at that moment, I'm talking about, I'm talking Nine, uh, 2001 approximately i went to i went to japan i stayed at my to, grandparents to house osaka, right to osaka to osaka, osaka yes. which is one of the culinary uh, i say oh, I, 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 I always did, and this is a discussion in japan you know kanto and kansai kanto is the area more tokyo mm -hmm. you know, and kansai it's uh, kyoto osaka kobe i i think that really the best food is uh, it's in the Kansai area. Yes. And uh, it's not because my family is from there. Nowadays, you can see in Netflix, uh, the street food of Japan. You Absolutely. see Osaka now. I think m many people didn't know much about Osaka a few years ago. And now Osaka is uh, it's, it's a place to, to go and eat in Japan. Um, of course, Tokyo and many other regions, uh, uh, prefectures in Japan have great food, of course, like in Peru. But, um, well... Osaka. And what was your what was your biggest learning? In, My biggest in, learning in Japan. was that I didn't know anything first. <laughs> Knowing that I didn't know anything, that I was uh, I, I was at the bottom of the pyramid uh, <laughs> yeah. in in in, uh, in, uh, in in cooking basically. So reality, even though, reality I, even though I thought reality that check. I wasn't. When I went to Japan, my my dad said, "Go to Japan. You're gonna you, you're gonna see." And then you tell me, but be, be aware that it's going to be hard and really hard. So I went to Japan. Uh, I had a job first in a restaurant uh, called Imoto Daikon, which means uh, the radish and the potato. Okay. Uh, in translation. And it was an izakaya. Izakaya is like a tapas bar, pinchos, yeah, Japanese style. Okay. Uh, and it's very popular. I would say that maybe Zakayas are the most popular restaurants in Japan because there you find a little bit, a little bit of sushi, a little bit of uh, yakitori, a little bit of everything, and people go there to drink. They started like picanterias in Arequipa in Peru, Maria Julia. They started yeah, selling chicha first, the hora to drink. You know, if you haven't been to, uh, everybody that's watching, if you haven't been to Arequipa, you have to go to Arequipa. It's a beautiful city to, to, to really understand what Peruvian food is and the most, most uh, cooks or chefs are women there. 
uh, and they have a lot of tradition, but it's based on the chicha de jora, which is the, 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 the main uh, beverage and also ingredient to cook, okay? And in Japan happened the same thing. These restaurants were open, first of all, to give drinks, alcohol, uh, to sake, to the, to, the, to the customers, and all of a sudden they get hungry, and you start making food for them, and you end up with a restaurant that serves alcohol and a lot of uh, small bites, basically. Okay, so by my, my biggest learning was when I went when when I started to work in another restaurant, which uh, is called uh, Seto Lushi. The the owner uh, uh, Hirai-san, he was already seventy two years old when I when I started in the restaurant, and he was really strict. Uh, he made me make a tamagoyaki, which is a Japanese omelet, and uh, a filet in a fish. After the test, he said, because he, I, I went in my, with, my, uh, with my resume, with all my, you know, my, my GPA, my, my magna cum laude, all my, all my achievements in the university, and I sat down with him. He didn't speak English, only Japanese, and he said, okay, what do you know about Japanese cuisine? And I said, I know this, I know that. Okay, make it. So I, I did the, 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 the two dishes, uh, the dish and the filet of the fish. And he said, no, you are still, uh, you are still a uh, miniarai, which is you have to watch only you're going to touch anything while you wash your the pots and pans. So that's what, I, that's what I did. You are going to start. Your level is while you wash pots and pans. And um, while you're washing, you can watch what people are doing, but you cannot touch anything. And okay. how long were you there? And, and uh, how long until you graduated from that experience and come back to Peru? Two years. Two years. Two years. And Two then years. You, you, you could say, okay, I've learned my lesson. Yes, I, I, I had a goal, really, to, to, to learn as much as possible in the shortest period possible. <laughs> so uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't take uh, days off. So I basically worked. 24 7 no, no, not 24 but i work 16 7 um and uh i think that sometimes time uh, or how much you learn does it depend on how, how much time you are in a place but it depends on how much intensity and how much effort you put in learning uh at home also and uh i'm gonna make the story a little bit shorter because i know there are many other questions yes but no, we, <laughs> back in peru which is the important part yes so, so, so I want to make the story short, but basically my experience at first was really hard. I, I, I thought about quitting like five times and coming back to Peru. Because after four months and five months of washing pots and pans and not being able to touch a knife or, 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 or at least, you know, uh, uh, be able to, to, to practice with some ingredients, I said, I don't know how long I'm, I'm going to be doing this. And uh, but then I said, if I go back home, and I just learned, you know, how to wash pots and pans, which is important. Um, I'm, who's going to lose? I'm going to lose because I just came here and I didn't, wasn't able to wasted, learn anything. Wasted the time that you well, were there. Yeah, wasted the time. So, I, I'm, I mean, my father said all the time until now, he, he tells me, patience, patience, patience. Be patient, okay? Don't rush. And all of a sudden, after six months, uh, one day, uh, we, we started to get on a connection with the owner, with Hirai-san, my boss, which, was, which is Takahashi-san, uh, which was Takahashi-san, but he still works there. Um, I, I saw him last year. He was the one who taught me every day by day. And he said, okay, come here. I'm going to show you how to clean the fish. I'm going to show you how to clean the seafood. Uh, then I started to making the, 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 the family meal uh, for, the, for, for, for the restaurant, uh, then sharpening knives. And... When I started cutting fish, that was my one of one of the biggest challenges for me because I realized that doing it perfect, doing it, doing something uh, bad, good, it's easy. Doing something good, very good, is difficult. But doing something very good, excellent, it's very very difficult. You know, it's, it it gets hard because these small details that you have to. To, to be able to manage with, with your knife, in this case, cutting the fish and just leaving it. They told me, there's a word in Japan, in Japanese called tsuya. Tsuya means when your knife is sharp and you have filleted the fish correctly, 
when you see the, the flesh, when you see the, the, the skin, when you see, when you got the sashimi, there's a shine, it shines, the fish yeah. shines. And I said, no, this is not possible. Maybe they're telling me this because it sounds nice and uh, it's good marketing, you know. Uh, but all of a sudden, I tried it. And, and after you, you do it many times, you realize that if your knife is very sharp and you do it, not, you feel it perfectly, the way that the flesh looks and the way you cut the sashimi and the way it looks in a plate is totally different than if you, if you don't do it in the, in the correct way. And then I, I said, hey, I was filleting. In, for me, it was okay. It was good. But I knew that there was one step above or two step above so I had to go. So what did I do? And that's what I tell everybody. You have to be... It doesn't matter what you do when you are working, but what you do when you are not working also. So if you're studying and you're learning, if something, but okay, you have, this is a snapper, cut it, okay, feel it. Okay, it was, it's good, but it's not perfect. So then I went home because I couldn't be, uh, I, I, I wasn't able to, to use the, 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 the products of the restaurant all the time. Uh, and if I messed up in something, of course, uh, they tell me, okay, stop, don't do it anymore. Until so you, you did practice at home all the time? Yes, I went to a supermarket that opened 24 hours and bought my fish. So after going back from the restaurant, it, uh, it was one o'clock in the morning. Um, I was the first, the first to arrive and the last to leave because I, I cleaned everything. I came with my fish to my house, uh, to my grandparents' house, and uh, start practicing again. And then at the next day, I went to the restaurant. I said, uh, "Hey, here is an um, uh, but I, can can I show?" And I went, I went with my own fish, and say that I don't want to, to, to use the <laughs> to waste the, the product. Yes, to waste the product of the restaurant. I, I, and he laughed and he said, "Okay, he liked that. I think." Uh, this attitude of, uh, attitude of uh, trying to do the things right. And from there, everything changed. He started to, to show me because in Japan, it's hard for people to show you, to, 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 to teach you. Nowadays, uh, we are in a, in, a, in a moment in life in, that, that it's easy to learn. You have YouTube, you have the yeah. internet, you have all the tools, the recipes everywhere. Before, it was not like that. You had to watch practice and now it's the same also because sometimes it's easy to see something but it's difficult to make it so uh so yes one thing i learned that is that that cooking was not so easy and uh and every time i learned more things i was more more scared of making it yeah. and and, he, and my boss told me it's normal that means that you are you are really worried about the outcome of of making things perfect yeah. and of, this of, this of brings trying. you well, all that experience brings you, you know, to where you are right now, to, to Maido, yes. you know, uh, to and, Maido. And, uh, and being number one. I know you don't like the talking about the number one. There's a lot of the, the, the mystic about it. But, uh, but for us who go to the restaurant, we do appreciate it. So tell us a, a little bit about uh, how the hard work about becoming number one, uh, not, be, not wanting to become number one, just becoming number one because you are number one. So tell us a little bit about that. I think uh, it's, it's uh, first of all, you're right. I, I, I think that thinking about a number one restaurant is very subjective because uh, people have different tastes, different, uh, uh, I would say, in food. If you ask maybe uh, to the world which is the best food of the world or, 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 or the country with the best uh, food, maybe, maybe China wins because uh, everybody likes and loves their own, their, their own cuisine right now. And uh, they are, uh, the population of China is really high, so every Chinese is going to say Chinese food is the best and maybe wins. So what I'm trying to say with this is that, that there are so many cuisines, there are so many restaurants that do great things that, yes, it's subjective, but well, answering your question. Uh, yes, I've mean, been number one for already three years uh, in Latin America. Uh, it's very motivating for me, and especially and more for the team. I call them family um, because 
my goal in life, and I think the goal of many chefs, uh, is to bring happiness to people. The bottom line of having a restaurant, cooking, everything, it's to see a smile in the people that come to your place, uh, regardless of what happens afterwards. If you win a, a Michelin stars, if you if you if you if you are ranked in in, in one of the world's uh, 50 best lists. Uh, or any other ranking. But what I think is that you have to have a standard of not only food, but everything that goes together with food. First of all, my, 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 uh, my style is make it tasty, then make it nice. First, has to, food has to be tasty, flavorful. Maybe Alberto, while we talk about this, can put some pictures? Of, of your of your dishes yes. let, no? let me find while, 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 while you explain what you what you tell us because then we will talk about the future we have uh we have a uh, five to less than 10 minutes so let's uh while you talk about this taste and beauty i want alberto to show some pictures of your of your dishes which are beautiful and i've taste i've ha i've been very lucky to taste them most of them in in a, a few uh occasions so I can I can guarantee that they are amazing so thank you Maria Julia sí. so I so so yes uh, well we see the the, the 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 photos or the pictures that is one of um one of the dishes that have been together with us for 10 years my is already 10 years but it has changed all the time and I think that if you have a dish that it's never it's, it's never perfect because perfection doesn't exist in that way. Something that is perfect cannot evolve because it has achieved perfection. So if, some, if, if you think like, like that in the world, it's like a cell phone, you know, it's like technology. Technology always can get better and can improve. Food can also do that. So you, you, you can see this is the last version of our braised short rib cooked 50 hours. And it's uh, covered uh, with a uh, rice paper. And inside we have a lot of uh, some other surprises. Well, while we see the pictures, I'm gonna keep on yeah. talking about uh, about the yeah. We about can the go through them um, see como un slide, yeah. a little bit of a slideshow. Yeah. You can just watch them. You see if uh, yeah, then I can I can explain. That's wasabi with uh, with the uh, strawberries. Okay. So well, uh, we wanna be seeing the pictures while I talk. Uh, so I think that the experience and talking about uh, uh, quality, I, I think that it's only it's food, of course, making making very tasty food. Uh, beautiful, but also it's everything that goes around food. It's the service, the details, the experience, the way you feel when you, when, when you, when you step into the restaurant, from the moment you make the reservation, uh, everything has to be an experience. Everything has to be perfect, you know? So, so, so I think that is the challenging part. And you have to all the time make make new, be creative, but not, not only be creative with food and with the dishes, be creative in the way you give the service. So, uh, so, so I think those are two of the main uh, reasons why, uh, why people like what we do. And uh, as an outcome, uh, we have uh, been uh, positioned in, uh, well, in first place uh, for, for three years. Uh, but I think that that basically, uh, if you ask me the question, it's because of that. It's because of this perfect mixing between between good food, uh, making it fun to eat, not not stiff. You 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 in my yeah. you have you have been there many times. You eat the way you want. You want to yes. eat with your hands. You eat with your hands. You want to use a uh, fork and knife. You can use them. Uh, you are free. You, you you have to enjoy your dinner, your lunch. You don't have to. We, you don't have to follow the restaurant rules. You ha, you have your own rules. You build your own rules. You eat the way you want. We don't tell you how to do the things. You know. You just enjoy and be happy. And I think that's important. Yes, uh, that's important. And the one one important thing for people who don't know uh, your food, uh, it, it's because they say, is is it Japanese or is it Peruvian? Is it both? How do you? <laughs> Okay, so yes, uh, we're talking about Nikkei cuisine. So to understand that, I'm gonna just give a small background about Peru. Peru is a country that uh, that, it, that it, its cuisine is built 
with the influence of many other countries, basically, or many other continents. Um, if not, we wouldn't have the Creole cuisine as we, as we know it. Uh, we have, of course, pre-Hispanic, and then we have all the, all the ingredients and influences that came from Europe uh, to build this cuisine from Africa. But if we, if we wanna, 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 wanna make it a little bit more detailed, I think Italy, Spain, China, Japan, are uh, maybe four of the, of the countries that have influenced more our cuisine. So many people in Peru, we call it Peruvia cocina, cuisine as a whole, but this cuisine is built, we have our own version of pesto, tallarines verdes, we have our menestron, which has an Italian influence, we have caucao, which has a Spanish influence, like the, como like the callos a eh, la madrileña. We have, we have um, many dishes that have, a, 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 in history, an origin, which is another, it's, a, it's, it's other countries. Also from, 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 our, from, from other regions, uh, uh, in the case of the desserts, we have a lot of influence from Spain also. So, and from, from there, we take it from, from, from the desserts of the, of the, of the nuns. Sí, and, but, and Middle, Middle Eastern, no? A lot of Middle and, Eastern. And of course, and, and Middle Eastern, mm -hmm. uh, which is also in the case of the lime, of course, you know, the lime that we have here comes from there. If not, we, didn't, we, we, we wouldn't able to have ceviche. So uh, knowing that, we can talk about a Peruvian cuisine, which is built with three big elements, okay? And main. First of all, the biodiversity of the country, which are the ingredients. Uh, of course, the, the, the civilization, the thousands of years of food history that we have. And uh, la last but not least, uh, I would say that because this has happened uh, not many years ago, Japanese, for influence, has 120 years only, uh, but all the countries that have influence are cuisine. So in this concept, I think that Nikkei cuisine has always been present in our, in, our, uh, in our Peruvian food, but we just didn't know it that way because we, we didn't care much about our food 15 or more years ago because we were thinking and looking more other countries than inside Peru. So I, to, to make it short, basically it's a, yes, Peruvian cuisine with a Japanese influence. That's what it is. But yes, Nikkei is Peru, Nikkei is Peru, and that's the name of my book. Yes, that's amazing. That's Where I amazing. try to explain why this cuisine, and people say, but Japan and Peru so far away, you know, how, yeah. how did they... The, how connection, did they the connection is incredible, and the ingredients blend so well that yes, uh, and I, it and makes I, an I, amazing I, product. I explain like this, okay, and it's very simple. Peru falls in love with Japan. Yes. Peru and Japan have a kid, <laughs> have a son. This son is called Nikkei. Yes. The, it, 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 and this son is born in Peru. Yeah. So, you're, so, so if you're born in Peru, you're Peruvian. In this case, it's the love of two countries and the outcome, the offspring is, uh, is, uh, is, 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 is born in Peru and it's called Nikkei cuisine. And it's amazing cuisine. So what is going to happen now from now on, I think we are changing the world. The world is changing. And uh, the way we see uh, our, our, not the cuisine, the cuisine is still there. It's how we are, how is going to be the approach with our customers, with our clients, with the people who love it. How are we gonna do it? Yes, um, well, first of all, one of the amazing things of life is not knowing what's going to happen sometimes, huh? Yes. Because if we knew everything, yes, there there's something good in not knowing. Mm -hmm. We want to know everything, and we, we because yes, we're humans, and that's a, that's our nature. We try to know, you know, what's going to happen tomorrow, and in one week, and in one year, and predict, you know, and and, this, and that's good. We have to do it, but not nobody knows, and nobody has the answer. But what I think is going to happen, and I uh, and uh, because of this, uh terrible situation that the world is uh, going through right now that I really feel that and as, as you see in other countries uh, we have we have finally seen the light out of the tunnel and I think we're going to be able to get out uh, 
I hope as quickly as possible. Um, restaurants are. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm gonna say one. Uh, one phrase that I'm using a lot right now, which is I think it's it's important, which is democratize delicious. Okay. Um, I've been seeing the news. Many of the chefs are my friends. Uh, for example, um, before many fine dining restaurants. If you ask them before the pandemic, if they were gonna be delivering food or be doing takeout, Never. no way. No way. Uh, and now has changed. But what is the positive thing about this? Is that mm, you are democratizing delicious. You are, you, are, you, are, you are giving the opportunity to people at lower prices, because you are not charging the same price that you used of to course, charge yeah. your because restaurant for many, reasons, for many reasons, because uh, yes, economic, uh, the, the economy and the people of course are, the economy is not the same as before. And we have to understand that. And it's a, it's a way of solidarity also to, to be able to show and give people what you're doing at a lower cost, being able to, to, to deliver to the, to, to the door of their houses, and giving them, giving them an excellent product. So, so that thing, I think that has to, to stay. That, that, that is something that maybe doesn't have to change. It can maybe uh, change in the way of, of, of the name of the concept, but I think that chefs um, have still that do fine dining or, 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 or for many people are or were, uh, chefs that maybe were, you were, you are going to be impossible to, to not, not impossible because, because of the price or because of the reservations, very hard to eat their food. Now you're going to be able to do it. So that I think we'll have to keep it. And now I, I, I think that the future is making a casual concepts, um, showing, trying to make the biggest amount of people in the world to try to be, to be able to try your food. And you can do that many ways first of all uh you have to check that the prices are okay so 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 most people can 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 be able to buy it uh you have to follow your dna even though you do a different concept you have the same flavors i think it's it's, it's, it's like artists uh it's like painters if you see uh if, if you if you see a uh, every artist has his style i think in food is the same every chef has his flavor if sometimes you 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 don't see the dish but you eat it, you would say this dish was made by this by this chef if you know him, you know because this is like the signature the, the DNA of the food. So so that is the future. I think the future is gonna be it's gonna go casual. It's gonna go casual. Uh, I I think that we're gonna we we'll talk about that about this this new reality. Yes, we're gonna have a new reality, but then I think we're gonna return to. I don't see the world without concerts. I don't see the world with, no. with, without being pe people to dance together anymore. Never. I, I, I don't see it that way. I think that would be a very sad life. You know, I, I, I believe we're going to be able to find the cure, the vaccine, get over this, uh, this disease, be very careful about our health, which is very important. Um, all, the, all, 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 the, all the, well, we have HACCP, you know, the, in 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 restaurant, which is hazard analysis, critical control points where we where we control, you know, that all the food uh, that we serve is is, is totally uh, that happens. Uh, That's been happening before. Yes, I mean it's always been happening, sick, but now it goes uh, further, further. Goes further, and I would say uh, sometimes, in in order of of, maybe, of of taking care of people's health, nothing is too much. In exactly. this case, you know, so so uh, yes, keep keep the wash the wash your if you wash your hands ten times a day, you do twenty. Okay, it's better, you know. It's 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 all uh, it's all this this new philosophy of being able. If you have a flu, like in Japan, if I call, use a mask, a face mask, uh, because oh. you don't want to you, you know you you don't want to spread it. Uh, you saw it, uh, Japan has been doing that, and Asia and, and many other countries for a long time. It for was a not a, a Latin American culture. But I think it should stay. Okay. So, but talking about food, yes. Uh, to, uh, and uh, summarizing it, I think the future is going to be that. The future is going to be that people are going to be able to have their favorite, the, 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 their favorite uh, food or their favorite uh, chefs 
being able to uh, to 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 deliver food at a lower price and democratize everything that we do, just give it to more people and make so it more, more people. Better. Also, also to rescue the, the, your local customers, your local clients, because in, in many of the top restaurants, it was very, it was very difficult to get in. Uh, and they're yes. obviously catering for uh, people who were coming from abroad and traveling. And, uh, and of course, we, we do hope that they, they come back soon but, yes, I know. Uh, but, but, I know. but we cherish our local customers, no? Of course, of course. That is also very important, you know, the connection with the local customer. In Maido, we have a amazingly, amazingly high amount of local customers. Yes. Uh, it's about now, three years ago was 80-20. 80, 20, 80 uh, 20 locals and 80 uh, customers from abroad. Yeah. And now, and nowadays, we have a, a, a 65, 35, 60, 40, approximately. Yes. So we, we, we do learn the tricks of going, of coming in, you know. I, I go at the end of the sitting time and, and wait downstairs to see what the cancellation is and then have lunch at four o'clock in the afternoon. I don't care. But that's the way I do it, you know. <laughs> yes, and, and, uh, and I think that, that, uh, that right now we have the, something, that, something that helps the restaurant is that we don't only have that AC menu, we have also a la carte. So yeah. we have two types of customers. Uh, customers that, that, that come to the restaurant and uh, have the tasting menu and the whole experience. And sometimes they just, I have a lot of, a lot of friends that come to the restaurant because they are customers, but they're already, already my friends because they're the regulars. And that's what Maido means. Thanks for coming again. We have to, mm -hmm. we, we, we love that to see that people are able to have a product that people can eat every week if you want to, okay? And uh, because we have ramen, you know, we no, have a I, local taco. Yes, I used to go we and sit at the taco. bar to have gyozas and the, the buns with the monkfish, uh -huh. the one with the monkfish that was difficult to get with monkfish because usually it's not available and, the, and the, with the braised uh, bread. Oh. Yes, that so, was what so, I used to do. Great, yes, and, and many locals and many friends do that. They come, they come, they say for 20 minutes, eat yes. what they want to eat because they say, oh yeah, I want to have this uh, uh, fried rice from Maido, the, the Maido fried rice. Okay, they, they come, it's a big portion, they just eat it and go. I'm in a rush, okay, can you make it quick? Yes, so it's a two-in-one. We have this, yes. this fine dining concept, of course, yes. But it's very casual and relaxed in a way, and we have also a la carte, which people can come over and just sit and eat whatever they. And that's why we haven't changed the the, the, the favorites, the, the I would say the best sellers yes. mm -hmm. have been in the menu for ten years, and they're gonna stay there because people did not get mad at me. Sometimes I had to, I took some dishes and I had to return them back to the menu because oh, I had people. I, go I will still if you get the gyozas out and the buns out. <laughs> Yes, so, and, so, and, and, now, and now we are going to, to, to put them back. Some dishes, for example, tacuchaufa. This dish yeah. that, that was very famous in our menu, which is a fried rice with beans, which may, we, we make like a tacu tacu, we call taku, it taku, here. Taku. Uh, mm -hmm. It's like a rice cake with beans. And then you toast it in the in, in 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 frying pan and you, we put some, some pork belly, very tender on top, um, some chilies. We took it out of the menu two years ago. And this is the moment for it to come back. To come back. People, when, we, when we put it on Instagram, people were very happy about it. So we are gonna do this uh, this mixture of, of of yes, my for for my dot home that which is going to be yes. the concept in the near future because we are as I said at the beginning we are still in the op I wasn't able to be on time because we are in the opening process of the restaurant and uh, things come and go without. Uh, too much uh, advancing uh, notice in advance, and uh, we are working like that every day. Uh, we hopefully we are going to be able to open. Uh, some restaurants are already open in Lima, uh, mm -hmm. but it, it, it's not for everybody at the same time. So we are still waiting for the last approval, which is which, which gives us our, our our certificate to be able to open uh, with all the biosanitary uh, uh, controls. And uh, I think maybe by the end of the month, we should be 25, 26th of May, we should be able to, 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 to start with our Maido at home experience. That's wonderful. 
well, it's been, we're, we're already on almost 45 minutes, which is... Uh, already 45 it, minutes. Yes, but, uh, but, but I didn't want to stop because, uh, because it's been so entertaining. And I want to thank you so, so much because... Oh, uh, please, Maria, and uh, thank, thank to everybody that, no. that uh, is going to watch uh, the... Yes, everybody's going to watch it. I mean, even more people, usually they register and only a hundred can come in, but we send the, re the, the recording afterwards. So now everybody can see it uh, and it's going to be great. And I hope that I can cook with you one day. This is my... Of course. Of okay, course. my bucket yes. list. Yes, so just let me know and uh, we, we, we will go back. M maybe outside of Milo, let's do it uh, in my house no, or in your house. In your house or in my house. Yes. Okay. Yeah, home cooking. That's something interesting. Now we have gone 30 years back, 20 years back. People started to cook at home also. Yeah. I feel like Teresa Ocampo myself because I grew up yeah, with Teresa Ocampo. That is good. And, and now I feel like Teresa Ocampo. I publish all my videos and people are clapping at me and I feel like Teresa Ocampo now. That is something that, 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 is something that we don't have to lose because we have been people that don't know how to cook or didn't know how to cook. They had to cook because they had to eat. People that love to cook, they were happy cooking every day, okay? But in, in this, in, from this, we have a learning. Uh, we have the restaurants. Now restaurants come to your house. Okay, perfect. You can go take, do a takeout. But home cooking, let's, let, let's make a promise, you know? Yes. Don't, Never we, stop. We don't, we don't have to lose that. Because mm -hmm. I was raised and we were raised eating at, at home having Absolutely. lunch at home uh, and having more time. And I think that that's what have to, we have to look also. Besides all the, the gastronomic industry, any industry, now many people can do home office. It has mm -hmm. been proven that it's possible. It is. Uh, this can reduce traffic, contamination, uh, po for pollution. The, uh, the planet the, needed this. It was a the planet a brilliant... needed this. The environment has the the, the 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 oceans have recovered in a in an amazing way. I think in these fifty days in Peru of of almost sixty days almost no sixty days already today uh, we have recovered twenty years of of of, of depredation of the depredation. ocean. Depredation, absolutely. Very big. Twenty years recovered in fifty days. That is something that I think uh, every every government also should take in, in, into account in because. Yeah. If you give one month of of, uh, of rest to the ocean a year, we will be able to have uh, uh, this generations, field. generations, generations. Yes. Uh, so we have good things that come out from these very bad things that happen sometimes. But let's be optimistic and uh, and Great. work together in order to get over this. Super. So now we have to do our new way of saying hello and goodbye, which is thank you so much. Uh, thank, you thank you so much. Thank you. Gracias. Gracias. Thank you, everybody. And, uh, well, it was a pleasure to be here in this talk. Thank you. Big kiss to you. Bye bye. Be safe. Bye bye, everybody. Bye, bye everybody. Bye. Ciao. Ciao.